Hare Krishna. A warm welcome to all of you in our first event in the series of events to honor the appearance day of Lord Narsingha Day, which is Narsingha Chaturdashi. This year, Narsingha Chaturdashi falls on 25th May 2021, and we have a lot of events lined up at the GBC SPT channel, Facebook, and YouTube to help you absorb in the pastimes and the holy names of Lord Narsingha Dev. And uh, what better way to start our series than to actually talk about Prahlad Maharaj, because it was for him that the Lord appeared to honor his word. And today we're gonna to start our series with prayers of Lord Prahlad Maharaj. And uh, to talk to us about this, we have Kamlakshi Rupini Devidasi. A warm welcome to you, Kamlakshi Rupini Devidasi. Thank you so much. Devidasi, Hare Krishna. A warm welcome to you on behalf of myself and the GBC strategy planning team. Kamlakshi Rupini is a disciple of Jayapataka Swami Maharaj and uh, she is a member of the Department of Deity Worship at ISKCON Brazil. She's also a member of the Administrative Board at ISKCON Brazil for the last 15 years where she gives courses and travels across the country. She's the co-founder of the Vaishnavi Ministry in Brazil and is serving as their advisor in the Shastric Committee and the Shastric References. And uh, she is doing her bhakti shastri, doing her bhakti vaibhav at present, and is also an accomplished uh, Bharatanatyam dancer. So, warm welcome to you, Kamlakshi. We're very happy that you're here, and uh, you're just going to absorb us in hearing the pastimes and the prayers of Prahlad Maharaj in glorification of the Lord. So, over to you. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Thank you for having me here today. Uh, I feel it's a, a very great uh, pleasure and blessing when we are able to speak about the Leelas of the Lord because then we can remember them and get purified. So it's actually uh, very good when somebody asks us to talk about the Lord. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, so first of all, I'd like to uh, offer my obeisances uh, to my spiritual master, to Shila Prabhupada, and to all the devotees. Om Ayana Timiranda Syagyanam Janam Shalakaya Chakshuru Miditam Yena Tasmai Shri Gura Veena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shri Mati Jaipataka Swami Thinamine Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shri Mati Bhakti Pedanta Swami Thinamine Namaste Sarasvati Deva Gaura Bani Prachadine Vibhushesha Sunibhadi Prashati Vishitirine well so Lord uh, Narasimha's appearance day is coming. And so I was asked to speak something about this uh, Leela, which is a very amazing Leela. Uh, this Narasimha avatar is so amazing. <laughs> All this story is so incredible and so fascinating. And I have to admit that what I like most in all this Leela when I read the Shriman Bhagavatam is Prahlada's prayers. Uh, the prayers of the Vaishnavas are always very special, of course. And what is amazing about Prahlada Maharaj is that he is just five years old. So I always found that really very amazing, right? Uh, we know five years old kids, they're not able to speak much, <laughs> not uh, much sense sometimes. And the uh, prayers of Prahlada are very, very elevated. It shows that he's not like an ordinary person. And not only he's five years old, but also he was born in a family of Asuras. And not just any Asura. His father was so much against Lord Vishnu. He wanted to kill him at any cost because he considered that he, uh, Vishnu killed his brother. So he was dedicating his life <laughs> to... Uh, finish Lord Vishnu, that's what he wanted to do. 
And it's amazing that uh, his own son became such a great devotee. So Prahlad is like a revolutionary <laughs> five years old kid uh, because although he's so young, uh, he doesn't care uh, that he's talking something that goes entirely against all the culture he has in the family, which is a family of Asuras, as I said. Uh, he doesn't uh, mind that, uh, you know, his father is not going to agree with what he's saying, is not going to support what he's saying, and that can actually cause him so much problem, which actually happened, right? His father tried to kill him in so many ways. And, but still, uh, he just said what he had to say. He was just truthful, and he was not afraid uh, of speaking what he felt about Rod Vishnu, and so it, it, it's very revolutionary, <laughs> that's what I think. And it's very amazing because uh, the Lord comes in that form so different as Nrsim Hadeva, half man, half lion, just to show his mercy to his devotee. And we can see uh, Prahlad is not a very, um, a devotee who has a very great position among the devotees. He's an Asura, he doesn't have that, and he's just a kid, and he's, he would be considered unfit to serve the Lord, or to do prayers, or to do so many kinds of service, because he was born in a family that is not only a low family, it's not only a low birth, but it's actually a, a birth in a family that is against the Lord. But still, he shows that there is no material condition that can stop one from doing devotional service according to his inclination. So he was a kid, he was only five years old, what he could do? He could just speak about the Lord, that's all he could do at that age. And that was his inclination, he couldn't stop it. He would talk uh, about uh, the Lord and all the glories of the Lord to his friends when he was uh, receiving his Asura education. And, uh, you know, instead of playing, he was just talking about Krishna all the time to everybody. He was kind of preaching and it was not very natural for him. And he just thought about the well-being of all those people uh, because he already knew whatever he had to know about Vishnu. He already knew. He already knew that Krishna is the Supreme. But uh, he was putting himself at all that risk just to benefit his uh, small friends right, at his school, at his Gurukul. So uh, his prayers are very amazing and all the situation, uh, his character is very amazing. So that's why I wanted to pick exactly this part of the story, uh, not exactly the deal of Nursim Hadeva itself when he comes and he kills Hiranyakashipu and all that, which is also very nice. But uh, I wanted to focus on these prayers of Prahlad Maharaj. And now the difficult part comes, that is uh, all the prayer is so interesting, it's so beautiful, and it has so much philosophical aspects in that, that I feel it's very difficult to find just few points to talk about. <laughs> so now I'll have to try to control myself because we also have some time, limited time, uh, to talk about some aspects that I consider that uh, we should discuss. Uh, but I totally uh, would like to advise to everybody, if I, if I may, that everybody should uh, try to read these prayers because all our philosophy is there. Whatever we say in our uh, philosophy, you can find in these five years old boy prayers. So uh, let's go, <laughs> let's do it. Uh, the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, first of all, I'd like to remind you all that he says, one who always remembers your activities and my activities also, and who chants the prayers you have offered becomes free in the course of time from the reactions of material activities. Uh, and this is in the Srimad Bhagavatam. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he used to hear these prayers and these pastimes of Prahlad Maharaj repeatedly because uh, that's what the Bhagavatam says. If we chant these prayers and if we offer these prayers and if we listen to these prayers, we become free from all material activities. 
we know that when Lord Vishnu asks, as Narsim Hadeya, when Krishna asks Prahlad if he wants any blessing, uh, I think all of you remember what he says, that the only thing he wants is to be free from all these material activities, material desires, material inclinations, because at the end of the day, that's our problem. <laughs> so if we get rid of this, we'll be, uh, you know, we'll get rid of all the problems because our soul is pure and we already have Krishna Prema there. So we just have to clean ourselves from these things. And that's why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave this example. Uh, he set the example listening repeatedly to these prayers of Prahlad Maharaj. And we should also do that. That's what the Bhagavatam advises us to do. So, um, I want to start just uh, reading a few shlokas of what uh, Prahlad says in this part and then we can talk about it. Uh, so, Prahlad said that I am not proud of being able to offer prayers to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. I simply take shelter of the mercy of the Lord for without devotion when one cannot appease him. Uh, this uh, this uh, thing that Prahlada says is very interesting because, again, he's talking about his position. Very humbly, he's talking about his position, right? Like, I'm a kid. I was born in a family of Asuras. I don't have any qualification to offer prayers to the Lord, but I just take shelter of his mercy. Like that, I can offer prayers to him. This is a very important point because, uh, first of all, we are all born in a very difficult situation. We are in Kali Yuga, so it's very difficult for us, right? And not only that, but also, even if we can uh, show any kind of good quality, uh, if we are very able in offering prayers, if we are very able in singing, in worshiping the deities, if we are very intelligent, uh, whatever it is, actually we know that all these qualities just come from the Lord. So even if uh, we are able to do something very nicely, uh, we have to understand that this is also just the mercy of the Lord. We should not uh, get proud of that. And since we, we understand that point and we understand that this is actually uh, the Lord's qualities, and he's giving a little bit of that to me, then we understand that, why sh what should I do with that, right? Uh, if I give you some money and ask you, just go to the market and buy some rice, you should buy the rice for me, that's my money, right? So you cannot just buy something for yourself. So in the same way, whatever qualities we have, that belongs to the Lord, it doesn't belong to us because we are just part of him. So whatever we have, we should use that just to serve the Lord. Otherwise, if I give you the money and you don't buy the rice to buy something for yourself, you'll be stealing from me, right? So in the same way, uh, Krishna has given all of us some qualities. We, I think all of us will be at least a little bit good at something. So whatever that is uh, that we can do nicely, we should not uh, become proud and we should understand that this belongs to Krishna and it should be used uh, to satisfy him, to serve him. And of course, to serve others, to serve the devotees, because Krishna is never alone, right? So if we want to please Krishna, we have to please the devotees. Then, uh, well, there, are a lot, there is not only one part, actually, of the Bhagavatam where we can find the prayers of Prahlad Maharaj, right? Uh, in the chapter 18, in the seventh canto, we have the prayers of Prahlad, right? Uh, these are very well known, uh, but also we have uh, some prayers after that, actually. Uh, so we just go a little bit uh, through everything. And so I will read from the text 8 of the Bhagavatam. I'll just, uh, I'll not read the entire thing, but uh, Prahlad Maharaj then here he, pray, he prays, uh, how is it possible for me, who have born in a family of Asuras, to offer suitable prayers to satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Even until now, all the demigods headed by Lord Brahma and all the saintly persons could not satisfy the Lord by streams of excellent words, although such persons 
are very qualified in the mode of goodness, then what is to be said of me? I'm not at all qualified. So, of course, he's been humble. Uh, he's teaching us to be humble also. But uh, again, if we have all the material qualities, but we don't have pure devotion, then it will not satisfy the Lord that much. Because if we are just relying on some spirit, uh, on some material position and material qualification, and we are not doing uh, whatever service we are doing for the sake of uh, pleasing the Lord and the devotees truly in our heart, if we want a position, if we want to satisfy our ego, if we want any other kind of facility, anything like that, uh, then it will not satisfy the Lord, not really satisfy the Lord, right? It will be, uh, it will be a mixed kind of thing. And it's very difficult because we're so much entangled in our ego and all that. So we should always try to purify ourselves from that kind of uh, tendency. First of all, we should understand how we, we show these kind of material tendencies. We have to be very sincere with ourselves. And if we just pretend we don't have anything bad in here just so pure, there will be a shadow. We don't want to see that, right? So you just switch off the light and you don't see that. But if there is a monster in your <laughs> room and you just uh, switch off the light, uh, or if you just close your eyes, it still can see you, but you cannot see it, then it's very dangerous. So when we find any fault in ourselves, we, of course, will be ashamed, <laughs> probably, uh, we'll feel bad about it, but we should not uh, indulge in those bad qualities, but we should also not try to pretend they don't exist. We should face them and we should uh, take that chance, that opportunity to become more humble, understanding all the, the um, shortcomings we have and we should ask for Lord's mercy and we should try to be as pure as possible uh, while we are doing our devotional service. So let's go on. Then Prahlada says that, uh, Lord Narsimha Deva, you are kind to the fallen souls. I have been put into the association of demons as a result of my activities. And therefore, I am very much afraid of my condition of life within this material world. This uh, part of the prayers of Prahlada is very important. Uh, he says that Krishna is very kind to the fallen souls. So if we are falling, that's not really a problem. The problem is what we're going to do next. <laughs> we are ready in this situation, so now we have to do something about it. We should understand, first of all, that whatever happens, whatever situation we are in, as Prahlad is saying, he could think like, oh my God, I'm five years old and I'm such a great devotee. I'm so surrendered. I have so much trust in Vishnu. Uh, I'm surrounded by so many uh, suras. And, you know, I didn't become an Asura. I, I'm so great, right? I'm so devoted. But that's not the way he thinks. First of all, he understands. Or he could also think like, I'm in the association of these Asuras just to preach to them because I'm so high. I'm such an elevated personality. But he doesn't think like that. He thinks like, I should have done bad things in the past. I should have turned my back to the Lord. Otherwise, why would I be? in this association, right? So he doesn't have a situation, material situation that is conducive to the devotional service. He doesn't have facilities to do devotional service. It's actually the opposite, right? He can be killed and his own father tries to kill him so many times because of his, devotional, uh, his devotion to Vishnu. So actually he doesn't give, he doesn't use that as an excuse. He doesn't feel that uh, life is not fair to him because he's in that situation. He just say, okay, uh, Krishna is good to everybody. He wouldn't want to put me in a bad situation. So of course, I have put myself in that situation. That's why I am, you know, I was born in this family of demons. And then he says that he's very much afraid of this condition of life within this material world because he is in the association of Asuras. And we know that association 
is one of the most important things for the spiritual life. So here, even Prahlada is giving this example saying that what should we fear in this material world? Because he doesn't fear his father when his father tried to kill him in so many ways. He doesn't fear uh, to talk about Krishna to all his colleagues when they are studying and the teachers have, you know, gone a little bit and the teachers might come back at any time, but he's not afraid. Still, the time he has with his friends, he's talking about Krishna. He's not afraid of telling his teachers also about uh, Krishna and that he's a devotee. He's not afraid of uh, chanting the glories of the Lord, but he's afraid of keeping bad association. And association uh, means certain kinds of people, certain kinds of food, certain kinds. And nowadays, in this age that you're living, really, really, really certain kinds of things that come through our screen, <laughs> mobiles, laptops, TV, this is a very uh, dangerous and powerful kind of association. Patitita Swami used to say uh, that when you are interacting with a person face to face, talking to that person, that's one thing. But uh, usually your conscious mind is very much alert. But when you are in front of the screen, you're just absorbing so many things. And sometimes you don't take that very seriously. And association is something that we have to take very seriously all the time. And we should be very careful to understand uh, how much we can, we are really strong enough to associate with certain kinds of people and environment, etc. Otherwise, that can be very dangerous for our lives. I always uh, like to remember that in the nectar of instruction, uh, we have a list of things that are good for the devotional service, that gives the success of devotional service and things that should be avoided. In, in this list, there are different things, but there's only one thing that repeat in both lists, what you should do and what you should not do. And the only item that is repeating both of them is association. You should not have association with materialistic kind of people, and you should have the association of people who are into spiritual life or devotees. So that's the only item that repeats. And you know that one of the ways we have to analyze the Vedic scriptures is uh, to understand what is more important that is what has been repeated. So if we have a list, of things that we should do and should not do, and only one item is repeating in both. That means pay attention to that. That is very important. So going on, uh, then Prahlada says that, my Lord Nursim Hadeva, by engaging your transcendental loving service in the association of devotees who are liberated souls, I shall become completely uncontaminated by the association of the three modes of material nature and be able to chant the glories of your Lordship, who are so dear to me. Uh, of course, if we are in the association of the devotees, then we can talk about Krishna, right? Uh, when we are not in the association of the devotees, it's more difficult. We have to, we have to try, yeah. usually we try, but we have to be more careful how we are presenting that and all. But then when you meet the devotees, you know, we all know what we are talking about, <laughs> and uh, that's the nice thing, right? Why uh, kids, for example, I have a kid, and he's, uh, he likes some games, and then when he uh, talks to me, it's one thing, but when he talks to another kid who also likes that game, it's another thing, right? So we naturally uh, search, we look for the association of people who are like-minded. So if we're trying to advance in our spiritual life, that's also a very nice thing to, to look. Uh, what kind of association I really enjoy, right? Because if in a place I, uh, I go there, nobody's talking about Krishna. Nobody's, you know, doing anything related to spiritual life and I'm having so much fun. Uh, there's something strange <laughs> because uh, it's natural for the devotees that they will want to be engaged in listening and talking and worshiping and glorifying Krishna. So uh, that's a good thing for us to, to pay attention when we are trying to advance in spiritual life. So uh, he goes on saying that because of combination with pleasing and displeasing circumstances, 
and because of separation from them, one is placed in a most regretful position within heavenly or hellish planets, as if burning in a fire of lamentation. Although there are many remedies by which to get out of miserable life, any such remedies in the material world are more miserable than the miseries themselves. Therefore, I think that the only remedy is to engage in your service. Kindly instruct me in such service. That is a very uh, good point also. We see that our advanced, so-called advanced society, uh, is always trying to find the remedies for the problems of life. And usually what we do, we create more problems that were not there before. So it's like a person who is upset and because that person is very upset, that person will start drinking a lot or use some drugs or something. And in the end, uh, that person will be even more upset <laughs> with more problems. So sometimes when we try to find a way out in a material way for our problems, usually we get more problems. Uh, there is that uh, uh, book, uh, Material Questions, Spiritual Solutions, or something like that. I don't remember the name of that in English. But when we have material problems, our solutions, they must be spiritual. Because material solutions, they will be good or they will work just to a certain extent. And if they don't really help us to address the problem, sometimes they just hide. Uh, the problem or sometimes they just distract our mind, that will be a bigger problem in the end. So here Prahlad is asking that, okay, there are some remedies, but the remedies are worse than the miseries themselves. So the only thing, the only remedy is to engage in Krishna's service. Why? Because that's our natural position. All the problems that we face in life is because we uh, gave up at some point to do that. We didn't do that at some point. We uh, preferred something else. <laughs> we preferred to be in this material world. So uh, the only remedy is to engage in Krishna's service because that can purify us. Not because Krishna needs that. He doesn't need that. He doesn't need anything. It's Atmarama. It's for our own welfare, right? It's like... Uh, if the math teacher asks the kid to say how much it is three times five, it's not because the teacher doesn't know. When the teacher gives a paper to the child, it's not because there is some problem that he needs to solve and he doesn't know how to and he needs the help of the child. He doesn't need that, right? It's for the benefit of the child who needs to learn that. So Krishna is not a kind of... A, narcissistic per person who needs everybody to be worshipping him and all that. Actually, we know he doesn't do that because when he has uh, that kind of position from his devotees, he actually becomes the servant of his devotees. He wouldn't have to do that, right? Once, uh, was that? Uh, I forgot, but uh, one Maharaj was giving a lecture and he was um, saying that when Krishna was uh, taking Arjun to the battlefield. Uh, he was driving, <laughs> the horses were there, and Krishna was, was sitting, I'm sorry, and Arjun was sitting behind, and all that noise is there in the war. And so how would he tell Krishna, turn right, turn left, go ahead, stop, uh, in the middle of all that confusion? So he was saying like Arjun was keeping his feet at the Lord's uh, shoulders, and he was just, you know, uh, very lightly kicking him like this, this way, this way, you know. And uh, we don't even need to go uh, there to the battlefield of Kurukshetra. We have uh, stories of devotees who are meditating under the sun, and Krishna would come, or Radharani would come and protect that devotee from the sun. We have so many um, examples of that, actually. And even, I'm sure, in your own personal lives, you'll also have some examples of how Krishna is serving his devotees all the time. So uh, when Krishna wants us to do this kind of devotional service, it's because that's who we are. 
we are servants of the Lord naturally. That's our natural position. That's our constitutional position. So if my hand goes crazy and try to do something by itself, it will not be good for my hand, right? So my hand has to coordinate the entire body. And we are parts of the Lord. We, we are not uh, the Lord himself. We will never become the Lord. So if we act, if we behave uh, as the spiritual soul that we are, that is a part of the Lord, and as servants of the Lord, as servants in a bigger picture, right? Then everything will be for our own benefit also. It will not, uh, uh, Krishna doesn't need any slaves or people just worshiping him all the time. That's not about it. He wants us to engage in devotional service because that will be good for us, not because he needs it. So then uh, Prahlad says, my dear Lord, people in general want to be elevated to the higher planetary systems for a long duration of life, opulence and enjoyment. But I have seen all of these through the activities of my father. When my father was angry, and he laughed sarcastically at demigods, they were immediately vanquished simply by seeing the movements of his eyebrows. Yet my father was so powerful, has now been vanquished by you within a moment. So uh, why do you want all these things? Why people want all these things? Why are we interested in a long duration of life? and opulence and enjoyment? Why do we want power and money and position and all these things? Uh, because we are thinking somehow that we can take shelter of these things. We can take shelter of our enjoyment. We can be, you know, we can just relax and have so much fun taking shelter of our enjoyment and we can just forget problems of life. Uh, we can just take shelter of opulence and buy all that we need, whatever we have to buy, we can buy, right? Uh, we want a long duration of life so that we don't have to go through so many diseases and uh, problems and, you know, and just live like hundreds and thousands of years so we can enjoy a lot and we don't need to worry about like when I'm going to die, you know, because it's so long, uh, my life is so long, like Brahma's life is so long and in the celestial planets, in the heavenly planets, the life is so long that you even forget that you're going to die. So, uh, but here Prahad is saying, okay, I've seen my father, he was so powerful that even those demigods, if you just look at them like this, they will be dead, you know, they will be vanquished. See, he was so powerful. There was nobody in the planetary system that was more powerful than him. And still, in one moment, uh, Krishna came and just killed him. Actually, Krishna took a little bit of time because he was playing a little bit, you know. Uh, if you have a cat or if you see a lion or a tiger, sometimes, like, if you see a cat, trying to get a cockroach or something like that, they'll be just playing like this, right? They enjoy that moment. And so Nisimhadev was also playing a little bit. He was just uh, enjoying that moment for some time and also he was taking time so that the proper time would come when it was not even, uh, it was not exactly day and it was not exactly the night yet because at that time he could keep the promise that Brahma has given to Hiran Kishpu and still kill him. So, um, Prahlad was saying like, okay, if I get a long duration of life, if I get so much power, if I have, get so much money, if I get such a great position, uh, whatever strength I can get in this material world, it will be gone. There is no way, at some point it will be gone. And whatever we can think of beauty, power, opulence, intelligence, money, position, enjoyment, whatever we can think, in this material world, it's very, 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 very small compared to anything that is present in Krishna as a person, in Krishna's planet, and you know, uh, in the life we can have with Krishna. That is all very small. We all know that uh, um, 
that villa when Lord Ingra became, becomes a pig and when the demigods come to take him back. Uh, so Indra is the king of the demigods. And when the demigods come, because of a curse, he comes to this uh, place as a, a pig. And when the um, demigods come to rescue him and take him back, for him to get back his place as the king of the demigods, uh, he thinks like, no, I'm enjoying so much here with my big family and all these wonderful things I'm eating, right? So we are in that position. That's why Krishna wants us to perform devotional service because we are behaving like that and it's very sad to see, right? When we see a kid or a friend or somebody that you know who has so much potential and we see that person, you know, being satisfied with uh, doing nothing with his or her life and, you know, just throwing their life away, we feel sad about that, right? So it's the same thing. We are all doing that, actually. If we are not uh, engaging in spiritual life, we are all doing that because we came to this place just to do austerities and to purify ourselves. And if we're not doing that, we are just wasting our human form of life. Whatever else we might think we need or we want, it's just an illusion. We don't even want those things, actually. <laughs> what you want is something else. And there is a saying that you can never get enough of what we really don't want. So that's why we get power, we want more power. We get enjoyment, we want more enjoyment. We get money, we want more money. Why? Because that cannot satisfy us, right? We, we cannot get enough of that, not enough to be satisfied because that's not really what we want. What we want is something else. What we want is a loving, pure relationship with somebody uh, to whom we can give all our heart and we can have complete trust and we can be ourselves, which we are also missing because we also need to be ourselves. We cannot be ourselves in this world. We don't know who you are. We are just like this personality now. It's not who we are. And somehow we miss that because that's sleeping inside us, right? It's like missing something that you never had or you know that sensation you're missing a place where you've never been so it's something like that you know our heart is missing that to be who we are uh, and to be with krishna and with the other uh, devotees for these loving relationships for these loving exchanges that is the natural for us but unfortunately we are wasting our time with so many other things then uh Prahlad says um Oh my Lord, oh Supreme Personality of God, I'm not reading the entire prayers, okay? I'm just taking a few points, few texts. Oh my Lord, oh Supreme Personality of God, have original spiritual master of the entire world. What is the difficulty for you who manage the affairs of the universe in delivering the fallen souls engaged in your devotional service? You are the friend of all suffering humanity. And for great personalities, it is necessary to show mercy to the foolish. Therefore, I think that will show your cause of mercy to persons like us who engage in your service. So he just, uh, you know, count on the mercy of Krishna. He does what he has to do. And at the same time, he counts on Krishna's mercy. And then one point uh, that I also want to say before it's too late, because we have limited time, as I said, is that uh, the, this nursing avatar is considered an incarnation that shows impartiality. Uh, it is said also in these prayers of Prahlad about the impartiality of the Lord. And it's very interesting because when you see that Krishna or Dev is killing somebody, right? He's killing Hiranyakashipu with, with his own nails. A lot of blood is splitting. And then you see he's protecting Prahlad. He's uh, accepting the garland that he has given to him. Is protecting him. So how can that be impartial, that kind of person, right? It seems that he's doing something good to Prahlad and he's doing something bad to Hiranyakashipu. So uh, this impartiality actually of Krishna is that he will reciprocate, right? It's so interesting. I love this point that Prahlad doesn't ask Krishna to come. He doesn't say, please, Krishna, come and protect me. Please rescue me. He doesn't do that. Please, Krishna, show to him. He doesn't do that. 
who tells uh, who tells that Krishna should come? Actually, who does that is Hiranyakashipu. He tells Prahlad, is Vishnu here? Okay, if there is anybody more powerful than I am, you are saying your Lord is more powerful. If there is anybody more powerful than I am, come here now then. Let's see. Come. Where are you? You are here. Uh, come. Let's see. Come out. Let me see. So who is calling Krishna to come? Who is calling Rasimha to come? Is actually Hiranyakashipu, not Prahlad. So uh, Krishna, he will <laughs> satisfy the desire of um, Hiranyakashipu in that sense. Right, and because we are kind of in a position like that, also he wants so many things, and sometimes, you know, when a kid uh, is testing the parents, you, you are the father or the mother, say don't do that, and the kid goes and do that just to see if you give him some limits. We are kind of doing that all this time in this world because we really know that these material things are not going to satisfy us, but we keep testing, <laughs> and. So many times, actually, we just want to see that this is not going to work, you know, and uh, really we want just to attract the mercy of Krishna. So here also, uh, Hiranyakashipu, he is the one who is, because we know, actually, Hiranyakashipu is also a devotee. He just came as uh, an answer, but he's really a devotee, and he is also eager to go back to like, the world. So <laughs> he also... Uh, you know, deep inside, he wants these things to happen. And so, actually, Krishna, he's satisfying, uh, he's uh, answering the call of uh, uh, Hiranyakashipu. And he's been merciful to both of them, both to Prahlada and Hiranyakashipu. Uh, but Prahlada has one behavior, he has one attitude. And um, Hiranyakashipu has another. So if he would uh, behave, act, uh, respond equally to both of them, doing, uh, you know, if somebody does one thing to you, for example, you have a company and you have two employees, one of them works very hard, does everything very well, and is helping your company just, you know, become a great success. And the other doesn't do anything, usually doesn't go to work and make so many mistakes. And there is, you know, uh, you are going to raise the salary for both of them. So people will say, what's wrong? <laughs> Maybe uh, that person has a different kind of relationship with that employee because, you know, he or she is doing nothing and still his uh, salary is being raised. So there's something wrong because, you know, that is not to be, to be impartial, to treat two different people with two different actions in the same way. Actually, to be impartial is to reciprocate, right? And Krishna is showing that. So, um, okay. Yeah, I think my internet is not very good. I'm very sorry about that. I just saw the, um, uh, these comments. Uh, but yeah, uh, the most important is to listen, right? <laughs> so, okay, we don't have much time now. So, I think we can just, you know, if anybody wants to make any comment or has anything to say, we can open for that because there is also a small video that I would like to show to people who are here. I want to share with you. So I think uh, we can have like five minutes before that. Uh, thank you so much for that. That was just, uh, you know, wonderful sharing some thoughts and realizations and prayers of Prahlad Maharaj. And uh, I think uh, we don't have any comments or questions yet. So maybe we can just proceed to the, uh, you know, I think you have a video. Maybe we can just show that to the audience. Yeah, I think that's great. Uh, before that, so I just want to explain <laughs> I just want to explain uh, why I'm showing this video. I'm a Bharatanatyam dancer, as uh, it was said here in the beginning. Uh, I have been dancing since I was a child, and, but I was learning Bharatanatyam for around the past 20 years from Guru Biba Nomadi from Bangalore. And so I also want all of you, please, uh, she's not in a very good health condition, so if everybody can just chant Hare Krishna once for her, I would very much appreciate that. Okay, so please, 
हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे so uh she has been my teacher and i'm very blessed uh, to have a teacher like her because she has always um told me uh, and all of us about the dance as uh i was saying in the beginning right whatever uh, thing we can do in this world we should use that for krishna unfortunately not only here um uh, not only in brazil where i'm from but here also in india and some so many other places there are a lot of people interested in this um kind of dances nowadays because they can show so many things we can show the leelas of the lord we can show even uh philosophical aspects but uh, there is always also we are in this kali yuga so there is always uh people who are trying to say no this is not nothing spiritual about it so even if something has something spiritual people are trying to take that away right and i was very blessed that my teacher always uh told us all that these dances are a form of worship and we should dedicate that to the lord and so this makes all the difference and that is um the one I, i'm going to show to you today is uh nrsimha's leela in dance and the nati shastra says that when people became very much uh, troubled in this kali yuga they didn't have much memory they were not interested in philosophy in spiritual life uh all the sages and demigods they were worried that we should try to find some way of uh, giving this knowledge to the people but we have to find a way to attract them because they will not be very interested if we just read the vedas and say you shall do this you shall not do that they will not be interested we have to tell them through stories and you know you have to attract their minds and so if we can find a way that is also attractive for their eyes they will be you know uh, we can grab them and uh, take them to think about krishna to think think about the lord to think about this philosophical aspects so that's why the dance in the theater came into this world according to the natya shastra not uh, for some cheap entertainment actually the actors and dancers they fall down from their high position in the heavenly planets when they use Uh, the dance and the theater to make a cheap entertainment making fun of the sages and this kind of things they are cursed to come to this earth and do some service here so that they could achieve again their high position because arts are meant to elevate the society and to spread uh spiritual awareness and knowledge so i hope all of you will enjoy and you know there are many more that are beautiful krishna leelas and all that in my channel also i hope you can all support because we have so many nonsense songs and dances going on nowadays even here in india it's very sad to see so i hope you can all support a uh, good uh, dance and entertainment that is also spiritual so yeah that's it that's so i just wanted to share with you and i hope you can enjoy watching that uh, leela being uh, done in the dance Thank you so much, Kamla Chirupini. It was wonderful to have you on our channel, the GPC SPT, uh, for helping us to absorb in in the past terms of modern day through knowledge for the upcoming festival. And uh, of course, we're all looking forward to the dance representation of the prayers. Uh, and the glories of Narsingha Dev. And uh, before we move on, I just want to tell our viewers that we have a lot more events coming up in relation to Narsingha Chaturdashi. So please stay tuned, and uh, you can watch this video and all of our other content on the GBC SPT channel on Facebook and YouTube. So uh, please visit there and find out what are the new programs which are coming up for the next few days. And thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much, Kamlakshi Rupini. Thank you uh, so much. <laughs> thank you. And yes, we just move on to our beautiful dance um, presented. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. श्री 
ಮತ್ಪಯೋನಿಧಿ ನಿಕೇತನ ಚಕ್ರಪಾಣಿ ಭೋಗೀಂದ್ರ ಭೋಗಿ ಮಣಿರಾಚಿತ ಪುಣ್ಯಮೂರ್ತಿ ಯೋಗೀಶ ಶಾಶ್ವತ ಶರಣ್ಯ ಭವಾಬ್ಧಿ ಪೋತ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ನೃಸಿಂಹ ಮಮ ದೇಹಿ ಕರಾಳಲಂಬಂ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ನೃಸಿಂಹ ಮಮ ದೇಹಿ ಕರಾವಲಂ ದಿವ್ಯ ಸಿಂಹಾಯ ಉಗ್ರಾಯ ವೀರಾಯ ವಜ್ರತಂಶ್ರಾಯ ಜ್ವಾಲಾಲಿನೆ ಜ್ವಲನ್ಮುಖಾಯ ಓಂ ನಾರಸಿಂಹಾಯ ಉಗ್ರ ಸಿಂಹಾಯ ಧಂಭೂಲಿ ತೀಕ್ಷ್ಣನಕ ದಿವ್ಯ ಸಿಂಹಾಯ ಉಗ್ರಾಯ ವೀರಾಯ ವಜ್ರತಂಶ್ರಾಯ ಜ್ವಾಲಾಲಿನೆ ಜ್ವಲನ್ಮುಖಾಯ ಿಂ ಮಹಾಡಂಶ್ರಾಯುಧ ಮಹಾಜ್ವಾಲಾಯ ಭೈರವಾಢಂಭರ ವಿಶ್ವಂಭರಾಯ ಘೋರ ವಿಕ್ರಮ ದೈತ್ಯದಾನವ ಭಂಜನ ಕ್ರೂರ ಹಿರಣ್ಯ ಕಶಿಪು ಧ್ವಂಸಕಾಯ ಮಹಾದಂಶ್ರಾಯುಧ ಮಹಾಜ್ವಾಲಾಯ ಭೈರವಾಢಂಭರ ವಿಶ್ವಂಭರ ಅಘೋರಾಯ ವಿಜಯ ನಾರಸಿಂಹಾಯ ಸಚ್ಚಿದಾನಂದ ಯೋಗಾಂದ್ರಸಿಂಹಾಯ ಪ್ರಹ್ಲಾದ ಪಾಲಕ ಶ್ರೀನಾರಸಿಂಹ ವೇದ್ಯಾಯ ವೇಧಸೆ ಪುರುಷೋತ್ತಮಾಯ ಅಘೋರಾಯ ವಿಜಯ ನಾರಸಿಂಹಾಯ ಸಚ್ಚಿದಾನಂದ ಯೋಗಾರಸಿಂಹಾಯ ಪ್ರಹ್ಲಾದ ಪಾಲಕ ಶ್ರೀನಾರಸಿಂಹ ವೇದ್ಯಾಯ ವೇಧಸೆ ಪುರುಷೋತ್ತಮಾಯ 
Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Sorry Thank about that. So I think we had a bit of a technical that wonderful, uh, you know, performance and representation. And um, thank you on behalf of the entire team. That it's probably one of the first time we've actually had a dance performance on our show. So uh, oh. we're grateful to you for that. Thank you for that. And uh, we wish all our viewers a very auspicious beginning of the Narsingha Chaturdashi Festival and please stay tuned. Thank you very much. I also want to express my gratitude to Shakshi Gopal Prabhu who is helping us with the back-end support right now. And stay tuned for more events. Hare Krishna, Kamalakshi. Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare. Thank you. Jai Jagannath. Jai Gurudev. Jai Shukrabhupada.